Stony Brook has a big baseball game coming up against their sworn rivals, Howard Township Middle School. Dawn has never heard of Howard Township, probably because they've never been mentioned before. We're told Dawn doesn't know about them, because she's not a local. But hello, Dawn has been at this school for over a year. She should know who their main rivals are. Argofunk Book Review, Argofunk Book Review. This book was written by Suzanne Wine. The school decides April will be School Spirit Month. Every day is going to have a different theme, like Dress Up Day, and Dress Up Like Teacher's Day, and Dress Up in a Color Day, and Dress Up Like Another Generation Day, and Dress Up in Your Pajama Day. Okay, clearly, they did not have enough ideas for the whole month, so they just reused the same idea over and over. I'm not sure why people are getting so excited about a baseball game that's a month away. Yeah, the team is undefeated. But they've got a full month of games left. If they lose on the second game of the month, everybody's going to feel really stupid about supporting their winning streak. Mallory is nervous about Spirit Month, presumably because she hates boys and gym. How can she enjoy a whole month dedicated to boys' sports? Dawn is unhappy because some of the events sound geeky. Christy is excited because she loves baseball. And wait a second, Christy's on the girls' softball team. Why doesn't she ever mention her team at one point? Continuity! School Spirit Month kicks off with a pep rally, which is kind of fun. It's followed by Cleanup Day, which takes two periods. Whoa! We're only on the second day of Spirit Month, and already they have canceled three classes. This continues throughout the whole book. They regularly cancel classes for spirit activities. I can't believe the teachers are going along with this. Marianne is terrified of Pajama Day. She doesn't want people seeing her pajamas. But if she doesn't go along with it, Logan will be mad at her for not supporting his team. Mom tells the girls it's okay if they don't participate in all the events. Nothing bad will happen if you show up in normal clothes one day. <laughs> yeah, right. In the subplot, the DeWitt kids are having a hard time getting along with the Brett kids, because readers are totally not sick of this storyline yet. Things are worse than ever now that they're sharing bedrooms. They try to make more room by cleaning up their toys, but they end up making a bigger mess than before. Dawn accidentally sleeps in on color day, so the most she can do is wear yellow socks. A local news reporter humiliates her on TV, tons of kids are mean to her, and the pep squad covers her locker with yellow foam as punishment. That is vandalism? She should complain. Marianne cries more than ever, because she knows she'll be viciously attacked if she doesn't participate in Pajama Day. Why, the kids in this school are so mean to nonconformers, they're worse than the members of the Babysitter's Club. Mom says they should start a petition to get rid of School Spirit Month. Dawn gives the petition to friendly people, instead of throwing it at everyone she sees and harassing them nonstop. So it's an improvement over the environmental book, at least. There is immediate backlash. Nobody wants to talk to Dawn. Alan Gray throws a water balloon at her, and someone graffitis Dawn's locker with, Go back to California, you weirdo! I have no idea why Dawn doesn't get a teacher involved. This is not normal behavior. Christy unloads on the stepsisters. Maria is just too uptight to wear pajamas to school. That's all. And Dawn, you're not happy unless you have some cause to root for. This time, you picked the wrong cause. Give it up. Dawn decides they must be doing the right thing if everyone is so mad at them. Uh, no, Dawn. Generally, it's a bad sign when everybody hates you. Things get worse. One of Logan's friends tries to rip up the petition, Dawn gets a threatening letter, and Alan Gray starts a full-blown food fight by dumping spaghetti on Dawn. The school cancels classes again so they can have an open forum about Spirit Week because letting students say whatever they want in front of the entire school is sure to resolve the problem. Logan complains people are losing sight of what's really important, his undefeated baseball team! Logan, please sit down. Dawn officially presents her petition to the teachers. She says she's been threatened, assaulted, and insulted for her beliefs. Immediately afterwards, somebody shoots a rubber band at her. I can't believe that someone attacks Dawn right in front of the principal and the assistant principal, and nothing happens. The principal just ignores it. What a terrible principal! The DeWitt kids are worried that their parents will move to a different house, so they clean up their things for real and start a protest. 
When the parents decide to build an addition onto the house, the kids start a second protest because they want to share bedrooms. Of course, this is a mirrored storyline about the importance of cooperation, but none of the characters realize it. Marianne and Don have their lockers glued shut, and there's a protest against Spirit Day. With some irony, Don realizes this is a pep rally for people who hate pep rallies. Things are even tense at BSC meetings, as the girls take different sides in the argument. The school has an open forum for parents. The adults are even worse than the kids. They ignore the no interrupting rule, they insult each other constantly, and it only takes three pages for the meeting to turn into a giant screaming match, complete with two men punching each other. School Spirit Month is officially cancelled the next day. Even though she won the war, Dawn feels terrible. She realizes she didn't want to cancel School Spirit Month, she just wanted School Spirit Month to have voluntary participation. Please note, this is not true. Her petition was to cancel Spirit Month outright, and this is the first time that the word voluntary has appeared in the book. So the ending doesn't quite match with the rest of the book. I would have done a brief rewrite just to make the ending fit better. Dawn goes on the PA system. She gives a rousing speech about true school spirit. They officially make school spirit month optional, with no harassment for participating or not participating. The baseball team wins the big game, and Dawn learns that compromising is the best solution to your problems. Unless we're talking about problems with Stacy, because she is still kicked out of the Babysitter's Club. The end. Post-book follow-up. I want to like this book. It explores some deep themes about how to live your life, and the tension between following rules and thinking for yourself. I like seeing the independent Dawn learn about the positive aspects of working with others. But oh my gosh, this book is so stupid on so many levels. There is a literal riot because Don wore yellow socks to school. A riot! The teachers do nothing to stop the widespread misbehavior. I want to know who threatened Don multiple times. I want to see him punished. The idea to have voluntary participation is so obvious, everyone comes off as an idiot for not thinking of it earlier. Some readers hated Christie's behavior. I hated Logan's behavior. He was super annoying and would not stop whining about his dumb baseball team. I like the drama between him and Marianne, although the book doesn't go into it that much. I think the book would have been just as interesting from Marianne's perspective. For some reason, Marianne gets full credit as the co-leader of the anti-spirit group, even though Dawn is clearly the ringleader. And really, Dawn's not the ringleader. The newspaper kids do more work than Dawn does. Overall, it's a book that tries to be deep, but just ends up being stupid. Almost all the characters are awful, except Mom and Dad. They were great! But that's probably the only thing I liked about this book. I get Babysitter's Club number 84, Don and the School Spirit War, a 1 out of 10.